Good evening. My name is Matthew Vinici and I'm the rector here at St. Martin's in the Field and we are delighted that we will be worshiping together tonight. Our worship will start outside in about five minutes and by outside I mean in the foyer here. The fancy church word is narthex. There's your five cent word for the night. And we're going to start here by lighting the Paschal fire. You're going to hear, you're going to hear me sing, and you guys have a response. So we're going to do a little crowd practice real fast. So your guys' response is, thanks be to God. Okay, so I'll say, the light of Christ. You guys sing, thanks be to God. Right, we're going to do that three times, pausing as the Paschal candle comes from the light, the fire we're going to create, crosses the entryway into the church, and is put into the wonderfully flowered stand here by the font. Everything we need for worship tonight can be found in your worship bulletin, or in the hymnal. All of the, the songs that we'll sing this evening are in the blue hymnal. It conveniently says hymnal 1982, right in the pew racks in front of you. The rest of the words you can follow along when we come to the baptismal covenant for the baptism portion of the service are in the red book with the gold cross on it that says the Book of Common Prayer. And you'll see in your worship bulletins all of the page numbers for the Book of Common Prayer are denoted with B, C, P, and a page number. We like to keep it simple and straightforward here in the Episcopal Church. Again, delighted you've chosen to worship with us tonight. Um, if you want to start to make your way back into the narthex, that will be great. And we'll start a fire here in a moment and get started right in about three minutes' time. Dear friends in Christ, on this most holy night in which our Lord Jesus passed over from death to life, the church invites her members dispersed throughout the world to gather in vigil and prayer. For this is the Passover of the Lord, in which by hearing his word and celebrating his sacraments, we share in his victory over death. Let us pray. O 
O God, through your Son, you have bestowed upon your people the brightness of your light. Sanctify this new fire and grant that in this Paschal feast we may so burn with heavenly desires that with pure minds we may obtain to the festival of everlasting light through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The of Christ, thanks be to God. The light of Christ, thanks be to God. Our service continues on page 11 of your worship bulletins with the exalted. Rejoice now, heavenly hosts and choirs of angels, and let your trumpets shout salvation for the victory of our mighty King. Rejoice and sing now, all the round earth, bright with a glorious splendor, for darkness has been vanquished by our eternal King. Rejoice and be glad now, Mother Church, and let your holy courts in radiant light resound with the praises of your people. All you who stand near this marvelous and holy flame, pray with me to God the Almighty for the grace to sing the worthy praise of this great light. Through Jesus Christ, his Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with him in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. It is truly right and good always and everywhere with our whole heart and mind and voice to praise you, the invisible, almighty, and eternal God, and your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb who has paid for us the debt of Adam's sin and by his blood delivered your faithful people. This is the night when you brought our fathers, the children of Israel, out of bondage in Egypt and led them through the Red Sea on dry land. This is the night when all who believe in Christ were delivered from the gloom of sin and are restored to grace and holiness of life. This is the night when Christ broke the bonds of death and hell and rose victorious from the grave. How wonderful and beyond our knowing, O God, is your mercy and loving kindness to us, that to redeem a slave you gave a son. 
How holy is this night when wickedness is put to flight and sin is washed away. It restores innocence to the fallen and joy to those who mourn. It casts out pride and hatred and brings peace and concord. How blessed is this night when earth and heaven are joined and man is reconciled to God. Holy Father, accept our sacrifice, the offering of this candle to your honor. May it shine continually to drive away all darkness. May Christ, the morning star, who knows no setting, find it ever burning. He who gives his light to all creation, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Let us hear the record of God's saving deeds and history, how he saved his people in ages past. And let us pray that our God will bring each of us to the fullness of redemption. Please be seated for the readings. Israel's deliverance at the Red Sea. As Pharaoh drew near, the Israelites looked back, and there were the Egyptians advancing on them. In great fear, the Israelites cried out to the Lord. They said to Moses, Was it because there were no graves in Egypt that you have taken us away to die in the wilderness? What have you done to us, bringing us out of Egypt? Is this not the very thing we told you in Egypt? Let us alone, and let us serve the Egyptians. For it would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the wilderness. But Moses said to the people, Do not be afraid, stand firm, and see the deliverance that the Lord will accomplish for you today. For the Egyptians whom you see today, you shall never see again. The Lord will fight for you, and you have only to keep still. Then the Lord said to Moses, Why do you cry out to me? Tell the Israelites to go forward. But you lift up your staff and stretch out your hand over the sea and divide it that the Israelites may go into the sea on dry ground. Then I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians so that they will go in after them. And so I will gain glory for myself over Pharaoh and all his army, his chariots, and his chariot drivers. And the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord when I have gained glory for myself over Pharaoh, his chariots, and his chariot drivers. The angel of God, who was going before the Israelite army, moved and went behind them, and the pillar of cloud moved from in front of them and took its place behind them. It came between the army of Egypt and the army of Israel, and so the cloud was there with the darkness, and it lit up the night. One did not come near the other all night. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea. The Lord drove the sea back by a strong east wind all night, and turned the sea into dry land, and the waters were divided. The Israelites went into the sea on dry ground, the waters forming a wall for them on their right and on their left. The Egyptians pursued and went into the sea after them, all of Pharaoh's horses, chariots, and chariot drivers. At the morning watch, the Lord in the pillar of fire and cloud looked down upon the Egyptian army and threw the Egyptian army into panic. He clogged their chariot wheels so that they turned with difficulty. The Egyptians said, Let us free, flee from the Israelites, for the Lord is fighting for them against Egypt. Then the Lord said to Moses, Stretch out your hand over the sea so that the water may come back upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots and chariot drivers. So Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and at dawn the sea returned to its normal depth. As the Egyptians fled before him, the Lord tossed the Egyptians into the sea. The waters returned and covered the chariots and the chariot drivers and the entire army of Pharaoh that had followed them into the sea. Not one of them remained. But the Israelites walked on dry ground through the sea, the waters forming a wall for them on their right and on their left. Thus the Lord saved Israel that day from the Egyptians, and Israel saw the Egyptians dead on the seashore. Israel saw the great work that the Lord did against the Egyptians. So the people feared the Lord and believed in the Lord and in his servant Moses. Then the prophet Miriam, Aaron's sister, took a tambourine in her hand, and all the women went out after her with tambourines and with dancing. 
And Miriam sang to them, Sing to the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. Horse and rider he has thrown into the sea. The word of the Lord. wonderful deeds of old shine forth even to our own day. You once delivered by the power of your mighty arm your chosen people from slavery under Pharaoh to be a sign for us of the salvation of all nations by the water of baptism. Grant that all the peoples of the earth may be numbered among the offspring of Abraham and rejoice in the inheritance of Israel through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. The Valley of Dry Bones. The hand of the Lord came upon me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord and set me down in the middle of a valley that was full of bones. He led me all around them. There were very many lying in the valley, and they were very dry. He said to me, Mortal, can these bones live? I answered, O oh Lord God, you know. Then he said to me, Prophesy to these bones and say to them, O oh dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, I will cause breath to enter you, and you shall live. I will lay sinews on you, and you will and I will cause breath, flesh to come upon you and cover you with skin and put breath in you and you shall live and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I had been commanded and as I prophesied, suddenly there was a noise, a rattling and the bones came together, bone to its bone. I looked and there were sinews on them and flesh had come upon them and skin had covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, 
prophesy to the breath, prophesy, mortal, and say to the breath, thus says the Lord God, come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain that they may live. I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived and stood on their feet, a vast multitude. Then he said to me, Mortal, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They say our bones are dried up and our hope is lost. We are cut off completely. Therefore prophesy and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people. And I will bring you back to the land of Israel. And you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people. I will put my spirit within you, and you shall live, and I will place you on your own soil. Then you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken and will act, says the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. O oh God, you have created all things by the power of your word, and you renew the earth by your spirit. Give now the water of life to those who thirst for you, that they may bring forth abundant fruit in your glorious kingdom, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. gathering of God's people. Sing aloud, O daughter Zion. Shout, O Israel. Rejoice and exalt with all your heart, O daughter Jerusalem. The Lord has taken away the judgments against you. He has turned away your enemies. The King of Israel, the Lord, is in your midst. You shall fear disaster no more. On that day it shall be said to Jerusalem, Do not fear, O Zion. Do not let your hands grow weak. The Lord your God is in your midst, a 
warrior who gives victory. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will renew you in his love. He will exalt over you and loud singing as on a day of festival. I will remove disaster from you so that you will not bear reproach for it. I will deal with all your oppression at that time, and I will serve the lame and gather the outcasts, and I will change their shame into praise and renown in all the earth. At that time, I will bring you home, at that time when I gather you. For I will make you renowned and praised among all the peoples of the earth, when I restore your fortunes before your eyes, says the Lord. The word of the Lord. everlasting God, who in the Paschal mystery established the new covenant of reconciliation, grant that all who are reborn into the fellowship of Christ's body may show forth in their lives what they profess by their faith, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Alleluia! Christ is risen! Alleluia!
Almighty God, who for our redemption gave your only begotten Son to the death of the cross, and by his glorious resurrection delivered us from the power of our enemy, grant us so to die daily to sin, that we may evermore live with him in the joy of his resurrection. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. Reading from St. Paul's letter to the Romans. Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore we have been buried with him by baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in the newness of life. For if we've been united with him in death like his, we will certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body of sin might be destroyed and we might no longer be enslaved to sin. For whomever has died is freed from sin, but if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death is no longer has domination over him. The death he died, he died to sin once for all, but the life he lives, he lives to God. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. How wonderful is the resurrection? Yeah, all right. Well, I've got some stories some of you may have heard. That we'll see if that puts it in perspective. I remember when I was probably about six years old, one day out of nowhere, out of nowhere, this huge package comes in the mail. And it wasn't my birthday. It wasn't any of my brother's birthdays. It wasn't Christmas. It was nothing like that. But it was a package chock full to the brim from my aunt and uncle with Star Wars toys of every kind. There were bases, there were figures, there were um, accessories. They were all there. It was the six-year-old equivalent, the six-year-old equivalent of winning the lottery. Because had I won the lottery, that's what I would have spent it on. The resurrection is infinitely better than that. There's another one. The sporting event that I wish that I had been old enough to appreciate and really live into was the 1980 Miracle on Ice. The U.S. hockey team wins 4-3 to three over the Soviets. Al Michaels calls out, do you believe in miracles? Yes! And the crowd goes wild. USA! USA! And the whole nation, even in the midst of inflation, even in the midst of international strife, for a moment can celebrate joy, can celebrate victory, united together. The resurrection is infinitely better than that. But after the game, there's this great quote from the team captain, Mike Garuzioni. He talked to the Washington Post and he said, I still can't believe what happened. And later adding, right now, I'm, I'm a little confused. Everything happened so fast. I don't think you can put into words what this means. And that makes me think of like, you know, the disciples and the women. I mean, there's the words in our gospel like perplexed. I mean, Ruzioni was there. He saw the puck go into the net. Imagine for the disciples and the women and Mary Magdalene. It did happen so fast. Just days ago, Jesus was crucified. And there's all kinds of questions. Well, is this an idle tale? What happened to Jesus' body? What does it all mean? What is resurrection? Resurrection is the foundation upon which all Christianity stands. St. Paul himself says, Jesus Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death will no longer have dominion over him. Jesus, bodily raised from the dead. Now this is not a mere resuscitation. This isn't like when he raised Lazarus from the dead. The idea there was that Lazarus will eventually die. But this is a transformed body, a body nonetheless. Christ will never die. Jesus is resurrected. Jesus is immortal. And so the women were right. Mary Magdalene was right. This is indeed no idle tale. Jesus is raised from the dead. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah. So what does resurrection mean for you? God offers you the gift of eternal life. Jesus' resurrection is just the beginning. You too can be raised on the last day. You might say, well, how? Through baptism. Through baptism. St. Paul in Romans says, do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ were baptized into his death. Therefore, we have been buried with him by baptism into death. And don't worry, this is going somewhere. It's not just all about death. So that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we too, so we too 
might walk in newness of life. And St. Paul loves the resurrection. He writes about it all the time. He wrote about it to the Corinthians, not just the Romans. He writes about it to everybody. And in 1 Corinthians, he writes, But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead. The first fruits of those who have died. Notice it says first fruits. First fruits. That means there's a whole lot more fruit to come. For since death came through a human being, the resurrection of the dead also comes through a human being, Jesus. And it happens, it is offered at baptism. Baptism is the foundational sacrament. It is the sacrament upon all the other sacraments rest. United with Christ in His death and resurrection, the promise of the gift of eternal life is made. In a moment, we're going to say the baptismal covenant together. And we will soon say that Jesus descended to the dead. But also that on the third day, Jesus has rose, risen again. Jesus is risen. Yeah, good stuff. But it doesn't stop there. Later, when we say that we believe in the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting... There, when we say resurrection of the body, we don't mean Jesus' body. We already covered that earlier. When we say that we believe in the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting, that's your body. That's my body. And even the bodies of loved ones past. Resurrection is coming for them too. And in the blessing of the water, the priest, Reverend Matthew, he's going to say, we are buried with Christ in death by it, we share in his resurrection. And that is another reminder that it is in baptism that we are offered the assurance of the gift of eternal life. Now, five children will be united with Christ today. The promise of eternal life, resurrection life, will be made present today, right there in that font. These wonderful children will be given the gift of the assurance of eternal life. But wait, there's more. There's more in baptism. There is the receiving of the forgiveness of sins, the gift of the Holy Spirit, union with Christians here and throughout the world. This is the day when these five wonderful children become Christians. And it is all because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ, the empty tomb, on that first Easter morning. Now this is something to celebrate. As Christians, do we believe in miracles? Yes! Yes! And instead of chanting USA, USA, how about Jesus lives! Jesus lives! Jesus lives! We believe in the resurrection of Jesus and His infinite love poured out in abundance. We believe in the wonder of baptism, union with Christ, and resurrection life for all the baptized in the age to come. Death is on notice. Christ has defeated evil and death. All evil, all pain in this world will come to an end. A new world is coming. You are loved. Jesus died and rose again to save you. You are offered the gift of everlasting life. This is the Lord's doing. And it is marvelous in our eyes. Hallelujah! Christ is risen! Lord is risen indeed! Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Christ is risen! The Lord is risen indeed! Hallelujah! Amen. This time I would invite the Barry, the Lavender, and the Loomis families, parents, godparents, and candidates to please come forward.
for holy baptism will now be presented. Parents and godparents, will you be responsible for seeing that the child you present is brought up in the Christian faith and life? Will you, by your prayers and witness, help these children to grow into the full stature of Christ? Do you renounce Satan and all the spiritual forces of wickedness that rebel against God? You renounce the evil powers of this world which corrupt and destroy the creatures of God. Do you renounce all sinful desires that draw you from the love of God? Do you turn to Jesus Christ and accept him as your Savior? Do you put your whole trust in his grace and love? Do you promise to follow him and obey him as your Lord? Now to the congregation, will you who witness these vows do all in your power to support these persons in their life in Christ? We will. And let us join with those who are committing themselves to Christ and renew our own baptismal covenant. Please stand. We are on the top of page 304 of the Book of Common Prayer. Page 304. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of bread and in the prayers? I will, I will with God's help. Will you persevere in resisting evil, and whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord? I, I will, will, with God's help. Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? I, I will, will, with God's help. Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? I will, with God's help. Will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being? I will, with God's help. And let us now pray for these persons who are to receive the sacrament of new birth. for these persons who are to receive the sacrament of new birth, who have renewed their commitment to Christ. Deliver them, O Lord, from the way of sin and death. Lord, hear our prayer. Open their hearts to your grace and truth. Lord, hear our prayer. Fill them with your holy and life-giving spirit. Lord, hear our prayer. Keep them in the faith and communion of your holy church. Lord, hear our prayer. Teach them to love others in the power of the Spirit. Lord, hear our prayer. Send them into the world in witness to your love. Lord, hear our prayer. Bring them to the fullness of your peace and glory. Lord, hear our prayer. 
grant, O Lord, that all who are baptized into the death of Jesus Christ, your Son, may live in the power of his resurrection, and look for him to come again in glory, who lives and reigns now and forever. Amen. Amen. The congregation may be seated. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let's give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. We thank you, Almighty God, for the gift of water. Over it, the Holy Spirit moved in the beginning of creation. Through it, you led the children of Israel out of their bondage in Egypt into the land of promise. And it's your son, Jesus, received the baptism of John and was anointed by the Holy Spirit as the Messiah, the Christ, to lead us through his death and resurrection from the bondage of sin into everlasting life. We thank you, Father, for the water of baptism. In it we are buried with Christ in his death. By it we share in his resurrection. Through it we are reborn by the Holy Spirit. Therefore, in joyful obedience to your son, we bring into his fellowship those who come to him in faith, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Now sanctify this water, we pray you, by the power of your Holy Spirit, that those who here are cleansed from sin and born again may continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ our Savior. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Name this child. Larue Langley. Larue Langley. It's going to be okay, I promise. Oh, sweetheart. I know. Larue Langley. I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. LaRue, you are sealed by the Holy Spirit, baptism, and heart of Christ of Christ. Amen. <laughs> LaRue, receive the light of Christ and be for us the light of Christ. Amen. Name this child. Patrick Matthew. Patrick Matthew. Patrick Matthew, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Patrick, you are sealed by the Holy Spirit in baptism and Mark is Christ's own forever. Amen. Patrick Matthew, be the light of Christ, receive the light of Christ, and be for us the light of Christ. Amen. Amen. Name this child. Alan Joseph. It's the water. Absolutely. Alan Joseph, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Alan, you are sealed by the Holy Spirit in baptism, and marked as Christ's own forever. Amen. Callan, receive the light of Christ and be for us the light of Christ. Amen. <laughs> oh, the candle is good stuff. <laughs> Name this child. Alan Rose. 
Alan Rose, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Alan Rose, you are sealed by the Holy Spirit in baptism and marked as Christ's own forever. Amen. Amen. Adeline Rose, receive the light of Christ and be for us the light of Christ. Amen. Name this child. Patricia. Oh, it's okay. Hello, oh, sweetheart. Elizabeth Patricia, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Elizabeth, you are sealed by the Holy Spirit in baptism, and marked as Christ's own forever. Amen. Amen. Elizabeth receives the light of Christ and be for us the light of Christ. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that by water and the Holy Spirit you have bestowed upon these your servants the forgiveness of sin and have raised them to the new life of grace. Sustain them, O Lord, in your Holy Spirit. Give them an inquiring and a discerning heart, the courage to will and to persevere, a spirit to know and to love you, and the gift of joy and wonder in all your works. Amen. Amen. Turn to the bottom of page 308. Let's pray together. Let us welcome the newly baptized. We receive you into the household of God. Confess the faith of Christ crucified proclaim his resurrection, and share with us in his eternal priesthood. My sisters and brothers, the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Please exchange with one another a sign of God's grace and peace. Peace. What a wonderful joy it is this evening to baptize five children into the household of God, into Christ's life, death, and resurrection, which we celebrate this evening. I'm so thankful for everyone who is here this evening. This is a wonderful thing. This time last year, there were all of like eight of us here, uh, and there's so many more than eight tonight. This is fantastic. So thank you all for being here to celebrate with us the first Alleluia's and the first Eucharist of Easter. One thing I will say is, as we uh, depart this evening, you'll notice on the table out in the, the churchy word is narthex, out in the lobby area there, there are baptismal certificates for each of those who were baptized tonight. We just said that we will support them in their life in Christ. Take a moment and sign all five of the baptismal certificates. Put your name in the margins around the certificate. There are plenty of pens there with lots of different colors. Find the color that you love the most so that when they look back on this moment, they will see those names of all those they know and a whole bunch of folks they don't know but will get to know through coming to church and being a part of this community here. Finally, what happens next is a service of Holy Eucharist. All are invited to come forward to kneel and receive the body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We're not yet back to doing both bread and wine, but in 
true Christian tradition, to receive the bread or the wine is the same as receiving both the bread and the wine. It's a wonderful two for. Uh, please uh, come forward at the, uh, at the uh, directions of the ushers. We'll head towards the back, then come down the front, and then if you fill in from the aisle around to the side, that will make it really easy for the people to know who comes next. If you do require gluten-free uh, wafer uh, host this evening, we always have gluten-free available. Please come to the standing station that will be here. Skip the line, like at Disney with the Disney Pass. Skip the line, come and stand right here, and we'll be able to, uh, to give you gluten-free uh, wafer this evening as well. Now, my sisters and brothers, walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us as an offering and a sacrifice to God. continues with the Eucharistic prayer B found on page 367 of the Book of Common Prayer. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God.
It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, for he is the true Paschal Lamb who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death he has destroyed death, and by his rising to life again he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Jesus, your Son. For in these last days, you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. The night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son and his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country, where with blessed Martin and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Thank you.
the table not of the church but of the Lord. It is made ready for those who love God and for those who want to love God more. So come, you who have much faith and you who have little, you who have been here often and you who have not been here long, you who have tried to follow and you who have fallen short, come because it is the Lord who invites you. It is his will that those who want to meet him should meet him here. Body of Christ, the body. of our worship bulletins, let us stand and pray together the post-communion prayer. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. May Almighty God, who has redeemed us and made us his children through the resurrection of his Son, our Lord, bestow upon you the riches of his blessing. Amen. Amen. May God, who through the water of baptism has raised us from sin into newness of life, 
make you holy and worthy to be united with Christ forever. Amen. May God, who has brought us out of bondage to sin and to true and lasting freedom in the Redeemer, bring you to your internal inheritance. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you this holy night and forever. Amen. Amen. Alleluia! Alleluia! Thanks be to God! Alleluia!